removing those obstacles is so important because if you think about the obstacles that are in your way, ask yourself, how many of these obstacles are self-imposed and how many of these are actual obstacles? And if it's through negative talk or it's because we have this perception of some sort, you know, I would say question it. And if it's not if, it, if it's not real, if it's not tangible, if it's not something that's truly holding you back, then get through that wall, go around I, it, I, go under it, go over it, but get through the wall. I think that I just want to just camp on this a little bit because we talk a lot in crystal leadership about being authentic and whether, you know, it, it's women or men, sometimes we feel like we've got to be a certain person to fit within the organization. I mean, you can be who you are authentically and still be successful rather than, oh, what do they want me to be? So it's probably not a terrific example, but you know, I love sports as much as the next guy, but I also like uh, history and music. And that's not the typically let's hang out in the pub or the bar and you know swap interesting history anecdotes. It's just not the typical thing that you do necessarily, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. From a, mm -hmm. a male perspective, but it's like, well, okay, I like sports, but there's a lot of other things in life I enjoy too. You know, I wouldn't say I'm an sure. artist, but I grew up in a family that loved art and music. I mean, there's rather than thinking, oh, well, that's not going to go over well in this environment. Like, you know, my impression is FBI agents don't, you know, sit around talking about, gee, what's your favorite, you know, classical music composer or something, you know, maybe they do. But rather than saying, gosh, I like classical music, therefore I better not tell anybody because I'll just get razzed. And, you know, it's like, Silly stuff, just be yourself, whatever it is you enjoy. Does that make sense? You know, stop being so afraid of what everybody else thinks you should be, you know? That, that's, and that's where you, that's where we as leaders, we lose our authenticity by taking on the traits of others mm -hmm. because we want to fit in. I learned that from the very beginning because I was trying to, you know, being in the army and then going into the FBI where I was definitely a, I'm a minority. And I would take on the characteristics of my male counterparts and be tough and strong and this mm -hmm. and that. But then I, all that caused was, okay, I'm insecure because I'm not being perfect at these leadership traits that I've taken from other people. And I have all of these other issues that are coming up because I'm not leading authentically. And it wasn't until I became the head of the cyber program for FBI Los Angeles, where I couldn't lead from the front. And that was my leadership style that I had chosen for all of those mm -hmm. years because I had no technical skill. So that's when I had to go back and rely on my problem solving skills and my networking and my relationship building and my compassion and my empathy. That's who I was. And when I began leading like that, my people followed me. The morale was great. Productivity was high. And I felt authentic as a leader.